After spending the past six months interviewing all different kinds of Europeans here in Taiwan, I've come to realize that something that we all have in common is first of all our love for Taiwan, second of all how incredibly amazed we are with the beauty and nature of Taiwan, and a third, the surprise we all received when we first did discover this hidden gem in Asia and realized that all the issues and inconveniences we were dealing with back home in Europe simply just doesn't exist here in Taiwan. For example, from a Swedish perspective, the absolute biggest issue we have been dealing with back home in Sweden this past year is the incredibly high energy bills, with some households even paying up to 40 thousand Taiwanese dollars for their electricity and a lot of other people actually risking having to sell their homes just because they cannot pay their electricity bill. So today I wanted to take this one step further but instead of asking more Europeans why they love living in Taiwan I wanted to discover for myself how Taiwan is making all of this possible and more precise how my actual life, future and economy actually is better here in Taiwan compared to back home in Sweden. And who better to ask than the Minister of Economy herself, the Minister of the Ministry of Economic Affairs, which is also the sponsor of today's video. But it turns out that in order to find the answer to Taiwan's both untouched nature, future economy and also the Minister of Economic Affairs herself, you actually need to leave mainland Taiwan and travel to one of the most unique places around the island. Hao 所以台灣才會發展這麼多的離岸風電這在亞洲國家台灣算是最先進的這瑞典是我們在那個省裡有很多嘛然後我有的時候你也可以看到那個安全的一個流程但是感覺是在台灣離岸跟瑞典那個省
相信他们如果这个鸟候鸟大幅度的飞过来的时候，他们会有一些降转机制，让离岸风电能够停下来，让鸟可以飞过去。其实台湾，我个人觉得，我今天看到这个实际上的状况，台湾是真的是很适合发展这个 offshore wind f a r 离岸风场的地方。对对对，有点吹起来，风来了，我们我们看到的要是风来了。<笑>其实这个风还不大，其实这个风还这个不大吗？不大不大。其实我们真的冬天来的时候，我做过这个，这个风大概两三级的左右的浪。OK， 风浪其实还很小，其实我我也得够了。<笑><笑>我遇过是像是坐呃弹上去又跳下来，屁股都会痛的那种那种浪。天哪！我们台湾的浪是很恐怖的。好，那我觉得我们需要继续这个影片，因为我我不希望他说到那个很大的风来了，<笑>所以我们跟我们跟各位继续拍这个影片吧。And although the wind got stronger and stronger, we all just couldn't resist this unique photo opportunity out here at Formosa too. So we all braved the waves in order to get ourselves. A photo or two. Formosa two, ten. Lucas, ten. Okay, Swanle, back to the video. Of course, there's no better way to learn more about Taiwan and, in this case, Taiwan's future green electricity goals than to actually come out here and explore this for yourself. So now I have a little bit more information on what's actually going on here for Mosa 2. And although I still had a few more questions regarding Sweden and Taiwan's electricity usage, I think we need to go back to the studio in order to investigate this a little bit further. But on our way back home to the studio, actually, as soon as we got back to the harbor to get off the boat, I realized that although I might have been the only YouTuber on board this boat, I was not the only Lucas on the boat. Lucas! Another Lucas! <laughs> and according to the Lucas rule, if you do come across another Lucas anywhere in the world, you of course need to take a moment to try to figure out what they are doing there. 我真的觉得你是台湾最忙的一个卢卡斯。哎，没有没有没有，我一直以为是我的这个，感觉这个最忙的卢卡斯都是我们的同仁。其实我们的同仁也来自十几个不同的国家，所以有很多的同仁对，不管来自于比利时啊，来自于英国，来自于荷兰那甚至还有欧洲人。哦，对对，很多的欧洲人，我们的技术长就来自于北欧。OK， 对对对对对对对对对。我也是有一点担心，呃，钓鱼的。对对，渔民是是，他们有印象吗？我我觉得。这对渔民来讲，哈，我们在这边跟渔民有非常好的沟通。那我可以举几个很具体的例子，比如说我们在建设的过程里面，第一个渔民当我们的鲸豚观察员，确定我们在施工的时候，哦，我们的那个周边的场域都没有鲸豚，那这个当然对环境的保护。那当然，我们甚至有请大学的老师来教渔民，哎，怎么去看这个到底叫平鼻海豚还是叫什么样的海豚？我们都会确定在我们的场域里面没有这些，这个是第一个。那第二个渔民，他们也会当我们的安全巡护船。我们也有我们大型的安全巡护船，但是渔民在会在我们的那个施工的距离大概一公里以外哦，就会在巡护，就确定不会有其他的渔船不小心跑上来。那像你刚刚问到了，我们跟渔民现在有没有产生一个好的关系？我认为是确定有的。那其实他们现在很喜欢在我们的风机的周边，因为我们风机的。海床那边我们有一些水下的抛石，有一些大的石头，那在那边就变成一个人工鱼礁哦，会开始有海草，那开始各种好的鱼类就在那边，所以我觉得这样子的一个风场已经跟渔民有一个共生共荣的关系，对对对，一起在这个场域，好，感谢感谢，谢谢您 ，Lucas。And now we're back here in the studio after a full day on the boat circling around Formosa too, and I just have to say it's such a unique and once in a lifetime experience. Being on the boat, just surrounded by all these super tall wind turbines, is something I highly recommend if you do get the chance to go out and explore and see these wind farms by yourself. But at the same time, I do realize that as a Swede, I might have been a little bit spoiled when it comes to renewable energy, since 60% of all our electricity do come from renewable sources, such as these wind turbines, which in 2021 was actually the highest percentage of all the countries in the European Union. And on a more personal level, if you have watched my previous videos, specifically the videos from back home in Sweden, you might have noticed that we do have these wind turbines in the middle of the Swedish forest as well. But both our parents and our neighbors also have solar energy on the roof, which transfers solar energy to electricity, which also helps heating up our houses. So at the first glance, when you do see the numbers and realize that Taiwan only has around 10% of renewable energy this year, it might seem a little low. But you have to remember that we're only in the beginning of these offshore wind farms here. 
here in Taiwan. Now, I should also mention that originally this goal was set for 2025, but due to COVID, this caused a bunch of different delays and funny side story, or I guess not so funny side story. Last time I came here to Taiwan in February, back home from Sweden, I actually sat right next to a Norwegian captain who was the captain on one of these boats going out to, not sure if it was Formosa 2 or one of the other wind farms here in Taiwan, but he told me that during COVID, they of course had the same quarantine rules like everyone else. So when he was out working, he was working one or maybe even two weeks outside at these wind farms. And then he was going to come back to mainland Taiwan to like rest until his next like one or two weeks uh, schedule was set. But then he also had to spend like one or two weeks in quarantine before he could actually then leave mainland Taiwan going out to these wind farms again and then coming back. So he was just exhausted. But he said that Taiwan was such an amazing place. And he of course also wanted to be part of this contribution to Taiwan's future green energy. So now again, he actually came back to do this one more time, one more season or however you, you count the time out on these wind farms. And since you did promise to actually subscribe to my channel and continue watching all my future videos here on the channel, I, I hope you're watching now. So a uh, shout out to you and all the other hardworking, both European and other, of course, Taiwanese and other nationalities workers out there on the wind farms, Formosa 2, Formosa 1 and all the other Formosas that are out there in the ocean around Taiwan. And I do personally hope that we will see even more Formosas all around Taiwan. And hopefully we can increase the number of renewable energy. And hopefully we can also increase the number of Europeans here in Taiwan. Since we all know firsthand that these offshore wind farms also is a great way to actually increase the corporations and increase the partnership between the European Union and Taiwan. And I also hope that this video increased your knowledge about Taiwan. Hopefully it also increased your interest in Taiwan and hopefully also increased your interest in my YouTube channel as well. So if you haven't already, please do remember to subscribe to this channel and stay updated on my future videos all over here in Taiwan. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with L as in like, ends with S as in subscribe. Please do both and see you all in the next one.